Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're now going to talk a bit more about the trouble of webhooks, or the troubles I think I've seen with webhooks. Uh, my name is Son Ash. Uh, I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. Um, can I ask who here has heard of Twilio at all before? That is almost everyone. Amazing. In that case, I probably won't need to tell you about it. We do phone calls. That's, that's it, right? <laughs> Text messages, video chat, authy, two-factor authentication. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff. We love that European, the Europe is putting in whole bunches of like multi-factor authentication stuff into payments because we're like, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> but we're not talking about that. We're not talking about two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication today. We're going to talk about webhooks. And we kind of covered what a webhook is. Um, I found another definition of it, which was like, it's a user-defined HTTP callback, right? Because you go into the, uh, into, into the dashboard of, of Twilio or of Stripe and you say, I want you to call this URL. And so you define it, and that's it. It's HTTP. That's all we need to know. And so the problem is, um, and so and we all use it, and we talked about this already. Everybody has webhooks somewhere along the lines. So what's the trouble? I always feel um, the trouble is with that discovery of a new tool or service. You're now told as a developer, we need to build something with communications or with payments and with something like that. And it's particularly difficult for us in Twilio um, because these webhooks actually work synchronously for us. Uh, when you make a phone call uh, to another, uh, uh, when you generate a phone call with a Twilio number to somebody else's phone, you don't actually tell the thing what to do at that point. You give it a URL. And that URL uh, Twilio calls, makes the webhook to, and says, what do I do now this call is connected? And at that point, that's when you have to tell it, uh, I don't know, forward it to this other person, or ask it a question, or play a song, or something like that. And so I always find like, uh, yeah, if you're in, uh, you're, you're, you're exploring that new API for that first time and, uh, and sure you found like the Twilio um, node library in this case, for example, and we've built ourselves a client and you're, you're reading the documentation and you're like, all right, cool. I need to create a call. And when I create a call, I need a from number. That makes sense. We're going to phone calls come from numbers. Uh, we'll, we'll find that in the Twilio thing later. And we've got a two number, right? That also makes sense. Um, and we'll, we, probably I'll put my number in there at some point. Uh, but then like the third required thing is this URL. And then you look into it, you're like, okay, that makes sense that we have to find out what to do with the call next. But I was in, I was in, I was in the node REPL here or, or you know, Python, Ruby, whatever you, you're, you're exploring this with. So then you have to like quit all of that and be like, all right, cool, I'll, I better start an express application or, or whatever. And, and, and you start an express application, you build an endpoint. And you've got this endpoint, and then how do you test that? Um, and we've, we've been through a, a few of these, right? You, uh, you might throw initial things into something like request bin, which actually went offline. It was a great tool, but there's replacement request bins out there now, which you can pay for. Or post bin, which is a free alternative, which does work. Uh, or ultra hook, as you mentioned earlier. Um, there's another one we've mentioned on the Toyo docs actually called Servio, uh, which is currently offline due to some sort of phishing scam, apparently. Don't know what happened there. Um, and then there's tunnels, ngrok. Uh, local tunnel is another one that I've used in the past. We're big fans of ngrok at Twilio because it does seem to just work the best. Uh, and it's absolutely nothing to do with the fact it's actually built by an ex-Twilion, as it happens, which is kind of cool. Uh, I didn't know that when I first started using it. And uh, Alan Shreve, who's behind it, is a, a great developer. Shane, he's no longer at Twilio. Um, or you're like, whatever, let's just push to production. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Well, so, I mean, we all write correct code the first time, right? <laughs> I can see senior developers here. Um, this is the problem. So what can we do about it? This is, this is what we've been thinking for the last 11 years. Twilio turned 11 last week, I couldn't believe it. 11 years, we're like, okay, webhooks have been like there from day one as, as important. So what do we do with this? How do we make this better for developers? Um, and so here is a bit of a whistle-stop tour of all the ideas and things we've had, and they're all pretty much still live. I think, which is terrifying, really, because the first one comes from almost that long ago as well. Uh, there was an experiment called Twimlets, which were little applications that you could um, uh, uh, create URLs for and use. It actually looks like this, still looks like this, probably looked like this on day one. Uh, it's wonderful because we've got in here the old uh, Twilio logo here on the head of who I like to think of as Dr. Twilio, um, <laughs> uh, which we're not allowed to use in any official marketing materials. So. <laughs> which I would love to, look at him, he's brilliant. Um, but uh, yeah, so these are actually, these are little PHP applications. Um, the code is actually open source, uh, we just don't publish it, which is an interesting version of open source. <laughs> you, you can ask for it, uh, 
somebody has recently. It's quite cool. Um, and, and it would give you things like just, just a, a URL which would forward a call to another number, a URL which would sort out voicemail for you and email you a transcription of the, uh, of the voicemail itself. Uh, all sorts of things like that, down to an echo twimlet, which would echo any twimmel you put into the URL. So it's kind of, it was a little dynamic, but not that much. Surprising number of people use this, uh, especially since it still looks like this. Um, it was an experiment, it's never going away. But um, around the same time, uh, there were a bunch of early fans of, of <laughs> everything's called twi twimmel something. Uh, and this is because when you respond to a webhook request in Twilio, you have to respond with some XML that tells Twilio what to do. And that is called Twimmel, uh, Twilio XML, I guess. Uh, it's a good thing JSON wasn't popular 11 years ago because twice on might have been even weirder. <laughs> um, so so uh, around, yeah, still 10, 9, 10 years ago, a group of uh, developers who are also big fans of Twilio were like, hey, we don't want to spin up an application every time we do this. And maybe they hadn't thought, found Twimlets. And they made Twimlebins, or Twimlebin.com uh, was the actual application, which much like Requestbin or something like that could make, give you a unique URL to use, but you could actually paste in to a text area there some twimmel which you want to re return. That was cool. It would also tell you if it was valid or invalid. According to this screenshot, I was writing invalid twimmel at the time, uh, which is nice to know. Um, and we like this so much that actually eventually, several years later, we bought it. Um, uh, we bought it off of them and then we integrated it into the uh, Twilio console. So I wanted to show you that just quickly right now. This uh, is the Twilio console. I'm just gonna buy a number that we can use uh, to play around with uh, during this talk. And, and show you how Twilbins kind of work now as part of the thing. So I'm just gonna grab this phone number, my phone app. Uh, oops, not that. That's the event today, cool. Um, I'm gonna buy that number, and then we're gonna set it up with a Twilbin. Um, because, it's gonna buy it. Something internet, something, there we go. Cool, now I own this number. And when we go to uh, set it up, we have all these options to configure it. And I'm gonna deal with messaging, which is down the bottom there right now. And so right now you have this option of if a message comes in, uh, we can have a webhook, but why have a webhook when we could have a tool web and not even worry about any kind of local development whatsoever. And we can select from our existing tool bins, but if it's the first time you're going there, you can create one, uh, which is even nicer. Um, uh, so if I just write myself a quick Twimble response, uh, which always starts with response and ends with response. And because this is for messaging, I can write a message. Uh, and I'm gonna, you actually, if you grab your phones, I'm gonna get you to text to this in a minute. So um, uh, I would like you to text in, start thinking about it now, uh, your favorite emoji, uh, because this kind of shows off that we took the static thing and made it a little bit less static because you can put kind of mustache templates in there now and use any parameters that are in the, um, and again, this is telling me about my valid tool. But yeah, you can use any parameters that are sent in via the URL or request bodies. So if I, uh, I've saved the tool bin, I've saved the number, and if you now send a message, send a message to this number, woo! That does say plus six one, but we're all in Australia, I assume, so it's just zero. Uh, or uh, uh, plus six one, four, eight, eight, eight. Send in your favorite emoji, remember. I wanna know what they are. 04888411672. My favorite emoji is the two beers cheersing emoji. Because uh, I like that the Unicode Emporium said, I know we've got one beer, but what if we had two beers? <laughs> uh, and I know I've got a response from that. Cool. Anybody else getting something back from that? Yes, yes, nice. All right, so it's working. We, got, we, we, we configured a number and we never left a single web page. It's amazing. Uh, still riding. I know favorite emoji is hard. There's so many. There's new ones now. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on because I'll run out of time otherwise. Um, so that was cool. But we looked at those like little template things. We're like, that's cool. We can make it a little bit dynamic. But this is not a full uh, programming environment yet. Uh, people want to do full applications with this, and that pushed the teams to think about the whole serverless thing. Um, which was quite exciting actually, like the ability to kind of write and run code without having to worry about your servers just inside the, the Twilio uh, infrastructure. Uh, and this kind of came out in, as Twilio functions um, in 2017. 
uh, and Toyo Functions was great because it instantly gave you a URL. You had to do that. I, I had to sweet talk somebody on the team to get phil.twill.io. Uh, <laughs> nobody else is getting one of those. Um, and then you just put your code, your, your JavaScript, right in here, and it would save and deploy and run. Uh, and that was pretty cool, I think, anyway. I mean, there's some downsides to this. Some people might say, JavaScript? Um, <laughs> and be unhappy about that. I'm not, some people might be, that's fine. And the other one is, you have to write it inside this text area. And that's a bit of a shame. Um, because that's not how we do our regular development. Um, at least that's not how I do it. I don't tend to <laughs> pop open a text area on a web page and, and start banging away. Um, you could install, in the configure section, you can install NPM modules and stuff in here, but that's kind of where we went with that for now. We'll come back to this. Um, because a different team was taking a different tack at the same time. They're like, what if you don't even have to know what a webhook is or code or anything like that? And they built Studio, which is just a drag and drop editor. It allows you to build conversation flows. Uh, and initially as a developer, I was like, you're, you're sacking us all? Yeah. And, uh, but no, of course, um, what's nice about this is it does the, the, the basics very well. And then as you want to do custom stuff, uh, allows you to either, uh, there's a widget for making an HTTP request, a widget for invoking uh, one of those functions. Uh, and so um, this allowed non-developers, product managers, other uh, people on the team, designers who want to talk, design the flow and actually visualize and see it, uh, work with it. Uh, and again, you could, if we went back to our number, which is over here, we can just choose a studio flow instead to, uh, to, to pick it, it's right at the bottom there, sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm a developer, so I was less interested in that. And another tack, our developer education team are responsible for our documentation and our uh, kind of in-person training events. And uh, Twilio's never like to do things kind of the regular way. Um, and so back in 2013, we ran a conference in San Francisco and alongside that, the developer evangelism team at the time, I was not part of it, that's far too long ago, uh, but they ran a workshop which they called Twilio Quest. That was a bit fun, it was a bit kind of game oriented, but it was a once off and it, it, it fell over uh, to not be dealt with again. Then uh, we decided to do in-person workshops again at our uh, conference and, uh, and we actually wanted to kind of expand these to be online as well. And so the developer education team picked up this idea of Twilio Quest and made Twilio Quest 2, which looked like this. Uh, uh, much more fun, a bit more exciting. Um, uh, Twilio Quest is a gamified uh, a platform, uh, or was Twilio Quest 2 was a gamified platform online for learning how to use Twilio. And it looked a bit like this. Uh, you made yourself a little character, that's mine. I don't know why it's got a mullet right now. Uh, you can change that, and apparently I picked that <laughs> at one point. I went, this is the one for me. Um, and you get, little, you get XP, you get to add stuff to your character, and you, as you complete missions. Uh, this is great, except of course, we still come across the problem that every single time they need to make a webhook, uh, we end up with having to do ngrok. And so one of the missions is set up ngrok. And what, what, what was terrible about this was uh, when we released this to the world, not necessarily the in-person stuff, but to the rest of the world, there was a bit of a drop off between people going through missions. And in this getting started mission, the biggest drop off was when we got them to set up ngrok. <laughs> and they were like, oh, another tool? No, I'm done. So the team went back to the drawing board. They were not done with this uh, Twilio Quest 3. Uh, came out earlier this year, which has an even cooler logo, I think, a little bit more metal, actually. I, uh, I think this is, um, this is my favorite so far. I want a t-shirt with that on, we haven't made them yet, but I'm sure we'll get there. Um, Twilio Quest 3, they went all out. It is a downloadable, installable application with a full-on game inside it. I can't just tell you about it, I need to show you it. Uh, it's right here. Um, uh, this, this is my Twilio Quest character. Hold on, I'm gonna turn the music on. <laughs> It's an electron app. Uh, this, the game is getting paid for us. Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, but it's also installed in the computer, so you can do a bunch of stuff. Now, of course, there is a uh, install NGROC mission. Because that's important, especially if you don't want to necessarily do the JavaScript. So let's um, finish the end. We'll go into a different mission. This is the Pog up to your base. This is your friend, Cedric. Operator. I am pleased to see you once again. Pleased to see you too, Cedric. Um, uh, but I'm going to go to the messaging. Um, we, should, we should have done more of these missions, but yeah, we'll see how this went. Uh, Cedric's always there to help. But what's important to this was we were able to build in an entire, uh, entire development um, 
thing. It's, run, it's in Electron, it's running JavaScript, right? So we built in an IDE. Um, and what you might actually see from this is that at the bottom here, it's actually going to run Ingrock for you. And you don't have to know about Ingrock at this point. Uh, so I'm just going to run that server. And I'm going to text my number. Uh, down the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, it's pretty small, but um, the, the game received the text message. Uh, I can't make this bigger because uh, <laughs> but it's there, there's a small beer thing at the bottom. And uh, a thing that now I've sent the message, received a, a message back to my phone, and so if I press hack, uh, this completes the mission. You can tell that I did all the right things. Uh, I clearly objected. I'll quieten that down for the moment. Uh, we can play it later, though, if you want. So it's Twilio Quest. It's one way to use Ngrok without even knowing you're using Ngrok, which is cool. So we were not happy with writing text, uh, writing code in the text area. Um, not happy on the developer evangelism team. In fact, myself and uh, a colleague, uh, Dominic, who's based in uh, San Francisco, both sort of um, came up with different tools and different ideas that we wanted to build. It grew into what was a serverless toolkit for uh, Twilio stuff. So Dominic built Twilio Run, which was a local kind of mimic uh, environment of, um, of the Twilio Functions platform. And then I was like, that's cool, but how do we start pro those projects easily? I created Create Twilio Function, which is a nice little project which just spins up a scaffolded thing. And then together we kind of came up with some function templates, a lot like the samples that you just saw in the Stripe uh, version. And those function templates can then connect up with Twilio Run and create Twilio Function to, uh, to, to build uh, new things. So I'm going to show that quickly. What do we got? So I'm just going to, because I called it create Twilio function, you get to then do npm init Twilio function, which I think is cool. Um, and let's call it hello stripe. And I'm actually going to use a template. Uh, and the template is going to be called America. Uh, uh. Oh, I spelled what wrong? Gunner? No, it's gunner. It is gunner in this case. I can tell you that. Um, so uh, npm init is great because you don't have to download and install create Twilio function in the first place. Uh, this may take its time because uh, internet and npm install. Um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to keep talking whilst it does that because it's going to ask me something in a minute. Um, so this little uh, tool, uh, yeah, is creating a, a local environment for you to build um, Twilio functions with and then run them. And then here it is. It's going to ask me in a minute. But you hate it when it goes quiet like that. <laughs> flash, flash. You're supposed to be doing stuff, NPM. Oh, I'm supposed to not kick the. Uh, uh, I have kicked the uh, uh, video cable out. And possibly. <laughs> it would be a distraction if that had finished in the meantime. <laughs> uh, We can also list the templates, which is nice. I can't remember the, uh, the main one, but um, let's go see what they're supposed to be called. I just want to make sure I did spell it right, you know. Did it spell it right? Yeah, I thought so. Um, uh, maybe there's no equals. Who knows? I don't ever know how to use flags in. Um, <laughs> they should both work. Uh, let's leave that doing that for a second. I'll come back to it in a minute. That's the demo. Um, this was the unofficial logo of the serverless toolkit because the team building the, uh, the serverless platforms weren't building these tools. And every time we told them about a new thing, uh, the project manager, uh, the product manager said he was happy as a seagull with a French fry. And so <laughs> um, if you've been to the beach recently, you know what that's like. It's work, you bastard. All right. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. And then eventually we built a CLI as well this year, which was announced and, and released in August. Um, I don't actually know what the driving uh, uh, thing for the CLI was initially. Um, it wasn't, I don't think it was actually webhooks. We just wanted to be able to do everything on the API via a CLI, via the command line interface. And so you can do things like using the core API and list out your messages. Um, we can currently list our debug logs. We're working on streaming them. That will be nice in the future. Um, but one of the fancy little things we did include in it was a way to tunnel uh, to your phone number. And so I'm going to come back to that and yes, that worked. Cool. Um, so this is nice. It's asking me about my account credentials. 
and now it's downloading the templates, and now it's installing other things from NPM. So we'll come back to that in a minute, um, because I have the Twilio uh, CLI over here, um, and so there's a bunch of stuff. Has auto complete? That's important because uh, when you go down the API core and then messages and then the, you know, auto completing that kind of stuff is useful. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to use the phone numbers um, section. Uh, and I'm going to update our phone number. Uh, so that was the phone number that we got earlier, which is not never going to give you. <laughs> Let's go back to here and get my phone number. I'm going to update it. I'm going to set the voice URL to, um, I'm going to set it to localhost. And this is the fancy thing. It will be running on localhost 3000. Never. Oh, no. New. New. Up. If we do that, what it's going to do is actually detect that we're trying to set it to localhost, spin up ngrok in the background, and give us an ngrok URL that is now pointing at that. So that's there. This now works. So if I cd into hell, <laughs> that's better. cd into hell is drive and run npm start. That's going to start up Twilio run, which has then created this function endpoint. So this uh, ngrok URL is now pointing at that. And so if I copy that, oops, let's just grab that. Not load it, grab it. I can go back over here. And what I can actually do is just uh, kind of let messages and go get those messages that we sent earlier um, using that client, client messages.list. I'm going to list the messages that were to uh, that number, not that. Point dot messages. I keep having to copy the number. Messages that were to the number we bought earlier. Once we've got those, I'll set messages to them. That's a nice, easy one. Um, that shouldn't take us too long, probably. Uh, messages. It's all right, we had 22 messages. That's nice. That's pretty cool. So using those messages, I can now kind of run through them. Uh, and what we can console log everybody's favorite emoji. Uh, that's the body of the message. You were good, right? You didn't. <laughs> I trust you for now. Uh, and then we can create calls back. Um, Calls.create. I'm going to create that call from, as I said, the number we bought earlier, to uh, m.from, which is the number you sent the message from. Uh, and then a URL, which is. Oh, yeah. Uh, which we know the URL, it's this one, which was created by the CLI for us. Uh, and then if we just close that loop, that's going to run through all those messages, it's going to show us all those emojis, but it's also going to start those, those calls, uh, which are going to run against the thing running on my laptop right now. Uh, so cool, drop table messages. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you should find your phone start to ring in a second. I've got mine. Yeah, nice. Um, Tell me. <laughs> so you knew what was coming, I guess. It's kind of telegraphed in the whole thing. Um, but as we can see, those post requests are all coming in uh, from the uh, from the webhooks that are being sent from the API to get that synchronous API response uh, back to us. And it was all because we just updated the phone number to a local host URL. Um, that should keep going for a little while. <laughs> um, cool. So the CLI uh, allows you to do that, which is quite cool. And then even better, I thought, was um, He's still enjoying it. I like that. Um, we actually built the CLI not in Go, which I thought would have been a nice idea because of that ability to build uh, releases for all platforms. Uh, we actually chose uh, Heroku's uh, Oakleaf uh, Node.js library, uh, which has allowed us still to produce um, CLIs for uh, Debian-based Linux right now. I don't think we've got other ones, uh, and Windows and Mac. Um, you can install via NPM or Brew, or I think we might have done a Windows thing, but I don't use Windows, so I can't remember it. Um, but it also meant... Uh, that people could, um, in the, anybody in the company didn't have to learn Go. It's not a language you use that much at Twilio. Uh, so you can build our CLI plugins or indeed features into the CLI using JavaScript, uh, which we like. And you can build your own. And so that serverless toolkit I talked about before, which was made up of three, in fact, um, two, uh, another um, serverless API um, module as well, has now been built up into a serverless plugin. And actually, you can see that. Um, stop it. Twilio uh, help. We've got um, 
a serverless one down the bottom. Also, Token is a plugin as well, which does things with um, JDBTs that we need for Twilio. So the CLI then allows us to expand this uh, with, with user contributions as well. And so that was the trouble with webhooks. I find it's really hard for people to get started with webhooks if they've not used them before. And it's a pain if you have. No one was pleased with it when, when Thor asked earlier. Um, and so we've attacked this on multiple fronts, as you can see. Uh, simple applications could use those Twimlets or Twimlebins. Um, uh, as part of education, we try and bring people onto uh, Ngroc uh, with Twilio Quest, but also kind of hide Ngroc away inside Twilio Quest as well. Um, non-developers can use non-developers and developers can use Studio to build stuff. And then for an actual developer environment, uh, the serverless toolkit and the Twilio CLI allows to um, build and automate things. Uh, and the serverless uh, platform actually has an API now, so you can develop on your laptop using the serverless toolkit to deploy that to production, uh, to test locally, deploy to production, and be happy. So that's all the stuff we've done with webhooks at Twilio. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Um, if you are interested in this, go play Twilio Quest, twilio.com slash quest. It's a lot of fun for uh, a documentation uh, platform. Uh, and if you are interested in any of those open source projects, um, things around the Twilio serverless toolkit, then github.com slash Twilio Labs is where we're doing that. Uh, the CLI itself actually lives at github.com slash Twilio slash Twilio CLI, uh, but is also part uh, maintained by a robot because we're not writing all those APIs. There's hundreds of them. And that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Phil Ash. I work at Twilio. Thank you. Mm.